opposite. We always walk Jake up to the new person or the person that's coming to visit or a person that, uh, you know, whoever it is, might be somebody that has just been gone all day and comes home. We just do this exercise with anybody he might be excited by seeing again and we're doing this every day with him with multiple people to make sure that uh, he's respectful and not jumping on people anymore. As you can see, we have him sit. I handed the person a treat. I even walked around him to show you the good kind of sit stay he has now. It's pretty solid. With my right hand, he's on my left, of course. My right hand holding the leash loose so I can tap him if he gets up. It's just a tap and release if he does get up. But with my right hand, I'm gonna pat his chest and say, go say hi. Go, go over there and say hi. There you go, buddy. And then get petted, come, come back to me, good. Next time, pet him, sit. Go say hi. There you go, come. Good. Sit. It's a great exercise to do. It teaches him respect for going to say hello to people, meeting people, greeting people. Um, I've thrown in the sit stay just to make it a little bit harder for him, where I walk around him both ways, and then I send him over. Go, go say hi. Treat, gets petted. You call him back to come. Come. Good. Just a great little exercise to do. You do this every day and he realizes there's no reason to jump. The treat's down there on his level. The hands are down there. If he does jump, you want to show him that he gets the opposite of what he got before. No more corrections. The correction was what probably perpetuated it. So if he does jump, no. The hands go away. You even step back a little bit because you need to show him that that inappropriate behavior makes everything stop. Don't say his name, don't say a correction word of any kind, just no, and that's it. And then when he stops jumping, which he will pretty quickly, if he does start jumping again, he'll jump, he'll stop, he'll probably sit and look at you like that, sit down like that. Then the hands come back and pet him. If he jumps again, nope, he blew it again. So you teach him pretty quickly that that behavior makes everything go away. Staying on, down on ground level on all fours uh, makes all the good stuff come to him. Okay. okay. Sit. Always walk him up to the mat, have him sit. Pat his chest and say, go to your mat. Walk him over like this and say, down. If for some reason he doesn't go down, all you have to do is lift your left foot and gently ease him down. You'll probably just see your foot go up and just drop if that happens. Sometimes when they go back home, they, they're not as good with the owners at first as they are with me, obviously, because you haven't practiced that much with him yet. Good. Uh, so that's the way you want to reinforce that, that down on the mat, and it, it won't last long. Pretty soon you'll have what I have if you just keep practicing in this way. What I just did was I just rewarded him just to get the ball rolling, rewarded him. You put the, the reward on the mat. Good. He waits till you withdraw and he takes it off the mat. It's respectful, it's calm. He's concerned with bugs right now. It's very humid here. We're right down the street from horse kennels, so we have a lot of flies here on hot, humid days. So that's why he's, um, that's why he's panting and that's why he's turning around. He's trying to go after things that are landing on him. Good, so I'll keep this short. So just the, um, the downstay is just a basic downstay. If this is all you do and he stays down for you, and he is calm and waits for you to, good, to uh, give him the reward and then withdraw and he takes it off the mat like that. That's great right there. But if you're in a fence yard or you're in your house, you can always drop the leash and walk farther away. You can always kind of push the boundaries, like test his limits. If it weren't for all the flies bugging him, he would be much calmer and walk farther away. Always, no matter what you do, no matter where you go, good. 
you always come back in front and reward him exactly like that. So I'm walking farther away. I'm gonna open this gate. Nope, if he gets up and makes a mistake, and I wanted him to make a mistake, you say no. See how he's kind of off the mat now? In this case, nope, come on. Reset him, just do that little left circle there and put him back. You already said down once, so you don't have to say it again. Go back to whatever triggered him to pop up, do it again. No. So I'm showing you now how to fix a problem. Let's do that again, just to get him over this. So if you're ever gonna do something that is difficult for him to handle, it's okay to remind him what you want him to keep doing. Obviously, this is tough for him. Down. So that was tough for him. Big reward, big handful of treats. Good, big success there. We had to reset him four or five times. Probably only show you a couple of those because um, you don't need to see every time. But uh, that's how you do it. You have to reset him four or five times. You just do it, stay calm, no correcting. You just reset him, you reset him, you reset him. And every time that we tried it, he got just a little bit closer to having self-control to stay there. He was trying, he knew what he, was, he had to do. It was just hard for him to do that. But he uh, regained self-control. He succeeded at it. He got a big reward and now we're done. Okay. Lead him off the mat, have him sit. Pat his chest and say go, and he's free. Always pick up this mat because this mat is sacred to this exercise only. It's much more powerful when you only use it for this one behavior. That, that's why you allow him on and you allow him off. You don't leave it down on the floor. It's not a doggy bed. A doggy bed is a free time place. He can come and go as he pleases. This is just for one specific behavior only. That's why it's so powerful. He's automatically triggered every time he goes on this to do that down stay. And that's it. That's what he does there. And watch you and get rewarded for each little um, challenge that you give him when he's on the mat. And I do this about five minutes a day. And if you don't have five minutes, just do it for three minutes, but just do quality, stay calm, do it the way we're doing it on the video, the way we practice at your house. And it, over time, it just makes him calmer and calmer. Okay. Whenever we're going in and out of the front door, we always have him sit first. We're gonna step through, step away from him, step through, just to make sure that he knows, hey, this has become our boundary, not yours anymore. You don't drag us in and out through the front door. Wait till you come back. Okay, he only walks through with you. And I'm gonna do it on the inside as well. I'm gonna have him sit, close that door and sit. And then I'm gonna open the door just to show you how we come out. Okay, okay buddy. Sit, I'm gonna move him here so you can see him in the light. And step out. He does this multiple times a day with different people every day. Okay, that's why he's so good at it. Now if he does try to like pull out, you can just tap a little bit. You see, I'm just tapping. Okay, and if you're by yourself, you have to close the door, do your little left turn, which he's very used to that move. We're always doing those left turns. We're never turning right and dragging him. We're always, okay, we're always using our body to do all the work. And that way the pulling has gotten a lot less since he's been here. Um, the boundaries are a way that anybody can slow a dog down, teach them how to think, gain respect from the dog. If you control all the boundaries in his life, the boundary in and out of the house, the boundary on your property, off your property, the gate, curbs, whenever you're crossing the street, the boundary to his den, the crate, he's gonna start respecting you a lot more than he did before and realizing that you're in charge and, and, and he's uh, not to be pulling you around and ignoring you all over the place. So. It's a great way to just really uh, change your relationship with your dog and anybody could do it, you just have to do it. So that's why we're videoing this for you so that you can see exactly what he already knows and then you're just gonna take over where I left off when we bring him back to you. Here we go, sit, 
This is our gate that leads out onto the street. I had him sit. I always have him sit first and then open the gate or the doorway because it's harder for him to do that. And so if it's harder for him to do that, it develops a higher level of focus if we do it the hard way. Okay, sit. I'm gonna have him sit again right here just to show you. He really won't come out of there until I come back. And he, see, he almost broke out of that sit stay. I don't know if you saw that, but I just went like this. You tap him and he'll go back. He really needs to wait. This is tough because there's a lot of stuff going on behind the camera. He needs to wait until I come back next to him, say, okay. Once again, do our little left turn, close the gate here. And then we're gonna go to the curb and have him sit. So maybe you wanna go that way. Sit. I always do the, the uh, sit stay at every curb because I really want him to respect this boundary. If we do this enough, he is way less likely to run out in the street when he gets away or when he's on free time because this is always established as your boundary and he never goes out unless he's on uh, work mode or in work mode, in training mode and with you, with you next to you. Okay, just like that and then I'm going to walk slowly if I can, this is a quiet street so I can, and just make sure that I reinforce that slow leash walking. See so how he wants to pull, and he's doing a lot better as you can see, and then on the other side of the street, sit. This is how I do it. And here the walk starts. Go, I release him. So we started at our front door, we did the gate, we did the curb, we walked across the street in training mode, and then I released him to be free and we started a walk. And when you do that, which probably takes less than two minutes, depending on your property and how many boundaries you have there, um, you, start, you get to start the walk on your terms. You start the walk with him being calm and having been uh, you know, in work mode with you for a couple of minutes and in the zone, so to speak. And you have a much better chance of having a nice relaxing walk where he's not just pulling you around and pulling your arm out of your socket and chasing the first cat he sees or whatever he was doing in your neighborhood. So here's how we're starting the walk. Let's go, buddy. We do this exercise every day I go out on the street, I take him somewhere and I do this sit left hand circles good I'll just pick a place I'll call him to come to me okay I'll walk about 10 feet and every 10 feet or so I'll do this left circle sit if he's not looking at me good I just tap his top of his head and he looks up at me he's very distracted by the camera person and other stuff Okay, so you might have to back up a little bit. I'm going to do another one right here. It's better to pick a wider area, maybe where there's a driveway <coughs> or more sidewalk so you can do a big old wide turn. Sit. Eye contact every time, really important. Straight down, good. Okay, I'll just do one more. Swing wide. See how all along this leash is loose? Sit. There you go, good boy. And then go, release. If you do this every day, you'll have more of what I have here where he really doesn't pull that much. His walks are pretty calm. He is panting, not because it's hot today, just because he always gets very excited and overstimulated when he's out in public. Uh, and you'll, you'll see that in the, uh, the in public video it's on the same, uh, a different clip in the same videos that we're making now. But he, he always gets nervous out in public, but you'll see that the more training you do with him, like what we're showing you, the calmer he'll be over time out in public. Sit. Good. Always when you're having him sit, make sure that you have, you look at him in the eyes as you're rewarding him, just like I just did. Ah, excuse me. As you can see, we don't say stay. Stay is built into sit, so you don't have to say stay. You say sit. He knows that he's supposed to wait there until you come back. If he does break out of the sit stay before you release him, 
okay, I'm, having a, I'm releasing him to get up, but if, if he'd made a mistake and popped up, you say no. Use your body to turn into him like that, do a complete circle, gently but firmly with a little bit of pressure, put him back, that's just a little bit of pressure, and then his butt hits the ground. Make sure that you finish that sit stay the right way where he really lets you walk around both ways, waits to be released. In this situation, we're out in a store, we're lucky it's kind of a little bit uh, slow today because he gets really nervous here. But always reward him that way, good, straight down as he's looking at you in the eye. And then with your right hand, pat his chest and make sure he waits. See how he was about to jump the gun? All I did was I tapped him and he went back. Go, and he's free. Down. Stay is built into down, so you don't have, you don't have to stay. Say stay. <sighs> he, uh, he's panting a lot because he gets really nervous out in public, but he's actually doing much better now. Good because we practice every day somewhere out in public. So I just wanted to show you what he can do outside. If he does pop up and if he does uh, you know, leave the downstay before you release him, you say no. If he just stands up, you say no. And just put him back with your left foot. I pivot on my right foot and just do that. Oh, he's, he did make a mistake. Nope. He's getting nervous because we have people behind the camera person, shoppers, and that makes him nervous. If he completely pops up and runs off, get in. Okay. Step into him. Do that reset with your body. Gently but firmly put him back and he'll know that he jumped the gun, he lost focus, and he'll try harder the next time. And then when he does it correctly, you reward him like this from a down stay. Good. Takes the reward off the ground there. Doesn't touch your hand. Waits till you put it there and withdraw to be released. You go stand next to him. Pat your leg and say, okay. Have him sit and then go. Release him like that and then he's free. sit. Always walk him up to the crate, have him sit, open the door, go. Set him in the crate just like that. He's going to turn around, you're going to give him a little treat, and you can uh, either unhook the leash like that, or you can, if it's overnight, if this is at night, he's going to sleep in there. Take off his little prong collar at the same time. I, I just give them a lot of treats, good, with every interaction in the crate. I always want him to love to see the hands coming in, love to see the collar coming in, or, you know, just any, every interaction is very positive. He goes in there and turns around, he gets a treat. Close the door, right before we, clo we close the door, I want him to like the door to be closed, so he's munching on a treat, treat as I close it. Hang up that, you can hang the prong collar on the door. It's much easier that way because if you just throw it down like, or put it down like this, can easily get tangled up in itself, and then it it's, takes you five minutes to untangle it. So we just hang that up there. Here at my place, he has slept overnight, every night in the crate. Uh, throughout the day, he goes in and out constantly. Throughout the day, exactly like this, he sits in front, we open the door, we send him in. Throughout the day though, we've been leaving the prong collar on, we just unclip the leash, but at night, every night for sure, it comes off. Um, and then when we take him out, oh, and also feed him in there, give him all his special stuff, things he loves to chew on, bones, all that. You want to develop this crate as his favorite place in the world where good stuff happens. It's his den, so we do all the things that a, a wolf might do in his den. He eats and he chews on stuff and he, it's cozy and private. You can put a blanket or whatever you want in there, dog bed, to make it really comfortable. Um, so we want him to love to be in there. Therefore, once we start controlling his access in and out, it's just another piece of the puzzle, another thing that makes him feel like you've taken control and you're different now and therefore he should listen to you uh, where he didn't listen to you before. So we're just trying to hit that issue from all angles. 
and see how he won't go through this boundary and won't come out until I allow him to. When you're going to attach the leash to him, just hook it up to the, or the collar, just hook the, the leash up to the collar like this. And by the way, the, collar, the, the leash is attached to the funny looking buckle like that. It's this, there's a, a round, perfectly round spacer right here with that you don't touch. So make sure you always hook the leash up to the funny looking buckle. You just reach in there and you can also, what I did for a long time, treat, he's munching on a treat, and then reach in while he's munching on the treat. And you, you'll be able to do this pretty quickly just by feel, put, put the collar on. And then see how he's waiting for me to allow him to come out? Okay. See how he came out, I stepped into him to get him next to me and close the door. And then we would take him outside and let him be free. Okay.